Hey, what's up everyone? Danny Lightning back with another video. Today we are checking out the Sony ZV-E10 Mark II for live streaming. We have it ran into OBS Studio. We're going to look at some of the different picture profiles and creative looks and talk about a couple of issues I'm finding with this for somebody who's live streaming. The first issue is if you're using USB streaming, it will kill the battery really, really, really fast, even if you have the battery plugged in and charging. So you're much better off running this thing through an Elgato capture card like I am right now. Plus, when you're USB streaming, you can't get into the picture profiles. You can only use the creative looks, which may be an issue for some of you guys. So again, you're way better off just streaming this thing through an Elgato capture card or some sort of capture card where you can actually get into all the features. And remember, as long as you have the camera plugged into a power source when you're running it through the capture card, you can go for hours and hours and hours before the battery dies. Right now, I am using Picture Profile 11, which is the s Cinetone. This will give you almost the same results as you're going to get in like S-Log3. It just has a little bit less dynamic range. I do have the saturation cranked up to, I think, plus 5. Now we have the saturation cranked up to plus 10, and I do like the way that looks, but it might be just a little bit overkill for my face, but it does make the colors in the background very vivid. And this is how the s Cinetone profile looks with no changes whatsoever. So that is the s Cinetone profile, and this is the one that I prefer. But I do like to crank the saturation up a little bit. But if you want to do no color grading and you want to use a picture profile, picture profile 11 s Cinetone is the way to go. No color grading needed. And again, you cannot get this if you're running this thing over the USB streaming, only if you're running it out of the HDMI to a capture card, unfortunately. Now we're moving over to the Creative Looks profile. This is the neutral one. You can run this on a capture card or if you're USB streaming. So these are the Creative Looks profiles. And this is neutral. I'm not really sure where we have the saturation, but that's the only thing I have changed is I did crank the saturation up just a little bit. So this is the neutral profile with the saturation on zero. There's no changes. This is just the way that profile looks. It's supposed to give you the flattest, most natural looking settings. Now we have the saturation cranked up to plus three, and this is the way it looks with saturation on plus three. This is the neutral profile with the, the saturation on plus six. And that really does make the background colors really vivid, but might be a little bit overkill on your skin. This right here is the standard creative look profile with no changes whatsoever. This is the way it looks right here. This is the PT profile. I do not know what that stands for, but if you want to use this one, this one's called PT. I don't think it's a very good one, honestly. Now we're back on the neutral profile with plus four on the saturation. This is the VV profile. I don't know what that stands for, and I'm not sure why you would want to use it. It's not very good. This is the VV2 profile, and I can say is Sony, why in the heck would you even make something like this? What is this supposed to even do? That is just months. That's 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 awful. What were they thinking? Now we have the FL profile, which is almost as bad. That is super ugly, like super ugly. I, I just don't know what they're thinking. I think this one says IN, which is interesting, but I really don't think you would want to use that. This is the SH profile, which is crazy bright. I don't know what SH stands for, but I can only imagine. I can think of one thing that SH might stand for, but uh, I'm not going to say it. So <laughs> let's go move on down to the next profile. Now we have black and white, which would probably require a little bit of lighting adjustment because it's looking way too dark with my current lighting. Now we have the sepia again. I might need to change the lighting, but I would never use something like this in the first place. But if you want it, you know, that is a picture profile you can use. And now we are back to the standard profile, which actually looks halfway decent. I mean, that does not look bad at all. This is the standard profile with the saturation cranked up to plus four, and that's probably a little bit much. This is the standard profile with these with the uh, contrast down to minus three, and I think that does make this one look better if you lower the contrast just a little bit. So the standard picture, the standard creative look profile, I keep saying picture profile, but the standard creative look profile does look pretty nice when you lower the sat the contrast. Oh my god, I can't talk today. I apologize, everybody but that is with lowered contrast right there. And now we are back to the neutral profile with the saturation on plus four, and I think that is where I like it. Maybe plus three is good on the saturation. Either way, it looks very, very nice like this. 
This is the saturation on plus three, and that gives me a little bit more of like a natural look, I would say. Plus four might be pushing it, but that looks pretty nice right there. And now we're back on picture profile number 11, which is the Acinetone. Again, you cannot get this if you're doing USB streaming, only if you're streaming over a capture card. And I think this one gives me the most natural look out of all of it. I mean, this is really, really, really good. I don't know why we can't get into these when USB streaming. That's kind of a big bummer. In my opinion, that's one thing they messed up on this camera. Now we have the saturation up to plus six. Honestly, I think this looks really, really good. Saturation somewhere between four and eight is really nice. I think I do think it's a little bit undersaturated on zero, but you don't really need to make any more changes, in my opinion, other than maybe changing with the saturation and the black levels. But you can always play with it more if you want. But yeah, these are the different picture profiles and the way it looks. Is it that much better than the Sony ZV-E10 Mark I? Well, there's definitely some advantages and disadvantages. I do think the overall picture looks better, but that's just my opinion. A lot of people just love the ZV-E10 Mark I. So the thing is, should you upgrade from the Mark I to the Mark II? Probably not. I mean, if you're happy from the image quality you're getting on the C Sony ZV-E10 Mark I, there's really no need to upgrade. Not at all. Now, if you don't like the image quality you're getting, this is a nicer camera. It has 10-bit recording instead of 8. You can go into S-Log 3 and record with this to where you can't really do S-Log on the ZV-E10 due to the fact that that was an 8-bit camera and this is a 10-bit camera. So that's always a plus. I definitely feel like I'm getting better image quality out of this over the Mark 1. There are some major changes, though. They've, they've taken some things away and added some things as well from Mark 1 to Mark 2. So there's a bunch of videos out there about that. I'm not getting into that today. I just wanted to show you what this thing looks like for somebody live streaming, putting it into like OBS or Ecamm Live or one of those things right there. This can give you some very, very good quality in a well-lit room. Now, if you would like to get a good look at how the ZV-E10 ZV Mark 1 looks, this is it right here. This is something I recorded a couple of days ago. I've always noticed that my face always looks a little bit pink on this camera, but I do have rosacea, which does make my face pink. It doesn't seem to be as bad on the Mark II, so the Mark II definitely has that going on for it. You can definitely tell some differences here and there in the contrast and the colors and everything else between the two cameras. All right, so there we have it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. There will be a link in the video's description to this and a bunch of really awesome other stuff. If you're interested in picking one up or some lighting or some microphones or anything awesome, check out the links in the video's description and uh, the pinned comment will have something like that as well. But this is the way the ZV-E10 Mark II looks for live streaming. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hey, catch you guys next time. Lighting out. See ya.